What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 wrestling stables who held all the gold. Now, recently we just seen the judgment day end up holding all the gold well not all of it but a lot of the gold uh you got uh damian priest and finn Balor as the undisputed tag team champions you have dominic mysterio as the nxt north american champion and you have rhea ripley as the uh the women's world heavyweight champion or whatever you want to call it and pretty much in a sense they have all of the gold or you know most of the company's gold and uh it's, it's very interesting to see how far they've come from when they started they when they started to faction to where they are now same thing with the bloodline at one point bloodline pretty much had all the gold outside of a mid card title I, I thought at some point they would have gave solo a mid card title but they had the undisputed tag team championships and then roman had the wwe and the universal championship so we're going to check out some of these stables legendary stables that were able to get all of the gold or most of the company's gold um uh, championships appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel let's get right into this one man being a member of a stable is supposed to help get a wrestler over although it doesn't always work out that way see the dungeon of doom the first family the misfits in action the alliance or anything mm -hmm. else that included hugh morris nothing funny about that is there mr demott However, there have been plenty of occasions throughout wrestling history where every single member of a group has been a champion at the same time, proving mm -hmm. that there is indeed strength in numbers. I'm Adam Pachiti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 times wrestling stables held all the gold. Join us. But first, if you needed the best protection possible, who would you turn to? Go through, no bother at this. all. Number 10, British Strong Style. Before they were hoovered up by the mad vacuum cleaner that is WWE, Pete Dunn, Tyler Bate, and Trent Seven were in a faction called British mm, Strong Style and Progress Wrestling. With their Midlands accents, gruff demeanors, and penchant for flat caps, the group drew heavy inspiration from a certain TV show, Seinfeld. Oh wait, it was Peaky Blinders. <laughs> Silly me. BSS got their first taste of gold when Dunn and Seven won the Progress Tag Team Championships in September 2016. However, when Dunn attempted to hand over his belt to Bate, they were stripped of the titles. So what happened next? Oh, Bate and Seven just won them outright in December. Fair enough. In the meantime, Dunn had won a seven-way elimination match to pick up the vacant Progress World Championship, meaning that the lads from the Black Country were all champions now. Oh, that's Apart pretty dope. From a two-week period when they lost the tag titles, all three men held onto their belts until September the following year, with Tyler and Pete even holding the WWE United Kingdom Championship during this time. That's pretty Fast dope. Fast forward to June 2018, and all three men held gold in WWE, with Tyler mm -hmm. and Trent holding the NXT tag title titles whilst Pete was UK champ, though this only lasted a couple of weeks. Some would say that all three men had peaked and played a blinder there. Oh, oh <laughs> Lord. That's how you get a dislike. <laughs> oh, brother, this guy stinks. <laughs> Number nine, the Hurt Business. Oh, WWE yeah. WWE have never seen TN. And I, I hope, I hope they do something. I know it's kind of like the Hurt Business 2.0. But I am all for Bobby Lashley getting some gold and uh, Montez Ford and Angelo Doc, uh, Dawkins, Street Profits, getting the undisputed tag titles at some point. We'll see how they play that out, though. NA slash Impact Wrestling as rivals, which is maybe why they've stolen so many ideas from them over the years. Take the union of Bobby Lashley and MVP, for example. They were together in Impact as the Beatdown Clan, and when both men were back in WWE in 2020, they got together once again under the new name of The Hurt Business. This was, this was solid, was man. was in Lashley's corner when he beat Apollo Crews for the United States Championship at Payback. By September, the group had added Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander mm -hmm. to their ranks, who set good. their sights on some tag gold. Their day would come at TLC when they defeated the New Day for the Raw tag straps. 
Now everyone had a belt, except MVP. He had a ruddy medal! Lashley would eventually <laughs> become world champion mm -hmm. just two weeks before Benjamin and Alexander lost their titles. After that, the Hurts business just sort of stopped existing until WWE needed two people for Goldberg to beat up during his feud with the Almighty. Uh. Isn't that always the way? Number 8. Degeneration X are you ready? Well, I really hope so, because we're already at number eight in our countdown. Degeneration X first arrived on the scene in 1997, when Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and China were joined by the obvious addition of Rick Rude in a suit. Because nothing screams degenerate quite like a well-dressed man with an immaculately kept moustache. Rude was out the door later in the year, with HBK also gone after his first retirement. This allowed the game to take over, sign some new recruits, and lead the group mm -hmm. to its most successful successful period. When X-Pac won the European Championship on the September 15th, 1998 edition of Raw, it meant that all four male members of DX were now title holders. Triple H had defeated The Rock in their epic ladder match at SummerSlam to win the Intercontinental Championship, whilst the New Age Outlaws had secured the tag straps earlier that same night. This elation only lasted two weeks, though, when X-Pac dropped his title back to D'Lo ah, Brown. D -Lo. Unfortunately, by the time he had won it back, Trips had had to vacate his belt due to a knee injury. It may have only been a fortnight, but just like me and my first girlfriend, it still counts. Number seven. <laughs> what is these jokes, bro? <laughs> oh, man, that is dope. Um, them, uh, I mean, it's, it's one of the most popular factions in wrestling history. So the fact that at one point they all had championship gold was, you know, obviously a dope thing. It didn't last long, but it was dope. And of course... The next on the list to shield, we we know about them holding all championship gold or everyone having a championship at one point. The Shield. When Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, and Roman Reigns all emerged from the crowd at Survivor Series 2012, dressed like they had just left the office on Casual Friday, fans knew that they were witnessing something special. Mm -hmm. That said, perhaps nobody knew just how special this moment would be as the WWE audience had just been introduced to three future world champs. Which is really crazy when you think about it. They have all won the WWE Championship. That's... That's insane. All won the WWE Championship. Now, obviously, you know, Dean Ambrose, you know, goes by John Moxley in uh, AEW. AEW, obviously. Oh, well, he's a champion now, too. <laughs> he's uh, there. Uh, uh, it's not the international champion. Uh, it's not called Intercontinental. It's like the international champion or whatever. He uh, just beat uh, Orange Cassidy. So he's their champion as well. Um, <laughs> so they're all champions. Oh, once again, it's, it's crazy to say that, man. Before they all got their mitts on the top prize, the Shield all won championship gold of a different variety on the very same night. Mm -hmm. At Extreme Rules 2013, Ambrose bested Kofi Kingston to capture the United States Championship. Later in the evening, Rollins and Reigns unseated Daniel Bryan and Kane to become your new WWE Tag Champs. The Hounds of Justice held on to all three titles for 148 days yeah. before Reigns and Rollins lost their belts to the Rhodes Brothers. Ambrose would continue on as US champ for almost a full year, though, the longest reign with that particular belt in company history. He managed 14 televised defenses before dropping it to Sheamus. Fair play to the lunatic fringe. Number six. A lot of people aren't a big fan of his title reign. I don't honestly remember it too much, to be honest with you. So I know I've seen a few people say they're, they're not the biggest fan of Dean Ambrose's United States uh, title reign. New day. Who could possibly forget the time at WrestleMania 35 when Kofi Kingston did the unthinkable and became mm -hmm. WWE Champion? He pinned Daniel Bryan in front Legendary of tens moment. of thousands of people to win the big one for the very first time. And you know what? He held that strap for a while, with his reign lasting 180 days, which gave the rest of his New Day brethren a chance to add to the hall. At Extreme Rules 2019, whilst Kingston was defending his title against Samoa Joe, Big E and Xavier Woods were competing in a triple threat match for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. The hip-swiveling, trombone-blasting <laughs> duo hip defeated Heavy Machinery and champions Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan to win their fourth set of blue belts. In retrospect, Kingston was also added to this reign as part of the Freebird rule. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that nice? 
The tag title run was over after just two months, and by October, no member of the New Day was in possession of a belt. Hey, uh, it was nice while it lasted. Power positivity and all that. Uh, it's just, hmm, we've already talked about this plenty of times. It's just, it sucks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> number five, it. The Undisputed Era. Oh, now nah, this, oh, man. When they, oh, man, Undisputed Era NXT was just fantastic fantastic bro oh man word undisputed in their name this faction of ex ring of honor lads set themselves up for greatness from the get-go originally consisting of adam cole bobby fish and kyle o'reilly with roderick strong joining later the mm -hmm. undisputed era ran roughshod over nxt for the better part of four years Facts. they held various titles on and off over that time but the night it all came together was the yep. 18th of september 2019 the first time nxt went live on the usa network strong defeated North North American champion Velveteen Dream to end his record-setting reign with the belt. This was Roddy's first taste of singles gold in the promotion and the last male NXT championship that wasn't already held by the era. O'Reilly and Fish had been tag champs since August, while Cole had been NXT champion mm -hmm. since June. Eventually, half of the stable lost their belts to Keith Lee as he beat Strong for the North American yep. title and then captured the top prize in July 2020. Honestly, they should have just given him both tag belts as well. <laughs> the possibilities would have been limitless. You get it? All right, man. We got. All right, yeah. yeah. You got. You got to stop that. You got to stop the with the puns. Got to. Got to. Number four, the elites. Do you remember during the early days of AEW when the elite booked themselves to look like absolute chumps? Do you remember when Tony Khan <laughs> went, "Nah, let's not do that," and things got infinitely better? Technically, the Elite first won gold in their own promotion when Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega beat SCU for the tag titles. However, we're interested in when the group went evil. <laughs> Not After evil. a split from Hangman and eventual heel turn, Omega beat John Moxley for the AEW World Championship at Winter is Coming 2020. In April 2021, the previously babyface Young Bucks would also batter Mox to formally join up with Kenny as villains. Mm -hmm. Poor old John, eh? The Bucks had been AEW Tag Team Champions since beating FTR for the belts at full gear the previous year. Now the Elite was back and they were all champions and we're not done yet. Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, who were technically signed to Impact Wrestling at the time, also joined the group's ranks. The I Good forgot Brothers about were that. Impact Tag Team Champions twice during their time on AEW TV, making this Super Elite even Damn. more impressive. And now they're just JAGs on fucking us. <laughs> smackdown that's crazy i forgot i forgot uh impact and aew they had that type of relationship where champions can float between shows and stuff like that that's crazy number three the bloodline the uh, most makes sense WWE that this was on a list to yeah. do the hold all the gold thing took that phrase quite literally the bloodline's rise to ultimate power began when roman reigns returned at SummerSlam 2020 with a new attitude a new mission statement and a new set of teeth mm -hmm, the just new one veneers. week later at payback reigns became the universal champion a run that would last for the next three years Crazy. and counting after persuading slash emotionally manipulating them to join him, Reigns brought his cousins, the Usos, into the fold as his devious little helpers. The bloodline was now in full swing. The twins won the SmackDown tag belts uh -huh. on the Money in the Bank 2021 kickoff show of all places, thus beginning an iron-fisted rule over the blue brand. But hey, because controlling one brand wasn't enough, the nope. bloodline <laughs> decided to grab all of Raw's belts too. Yep. <laughs> Reigns defeated Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 38 to become WWE champion as well. Then, a month or so later, the Usos beat RK Bro to win the Raw tag belts. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you really want to be a completionist, you can also chuck in that time Solo Sokoa was NXT North American champion for a Yeah, he was. He was for a little bit. I did forget to uh, talk about that at the beginning. He was North American champion for a little bit. And then once he became a full time member or whatnot on Monday Night Raw, like not Monday Night Raw, like on the main roster on SmackDown, that's when they had him drop the belt. So for a week or don't, I don't really care. Number two, the four horsemen. The four horsemen were less was of a stable on and list more too. of a philosophy, which is some of the deepest analysis you will ever hear on a professional wrestling video hosted by me. 
That philosophy was to protect Ric Flair at all costs. Mm -hmm. The Nature Boy would recruit three other wrestlers to constantly be at his side, ensuring yeah. he had maximum backup when challenging for or defending the NWA slash WCW world title. Over the years, many men have become horsemen, some more effectively than others, but the lineup we are interested in is the one featuring Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, and Lex Luger. At the 1987 Great American Bash, Luger defeated Nikita Koloff to win his first ever United States title. Two months later, Arn and Tully wrested the NWA tag titles away from the Rock and Roll Express. The last mm. piece of the puzzle to fall into place was Flair, who defeated Ronnie Garvin at Starcade in November to become world champion for the fifth time, oh, everybody or the got time if you ask the man himself. Many years later, Flair would put his experience in the Horseman to good use when he helped guide yet another yeah. mega stable to a championship clean sweep. Mm -hmm. Number one, Evolution. Figured that would be, if it wasn't going to be the bloodline, which I don't think it should have been, Evolution probably fits that perfectly they ran monday night raw it was just <laughs> it was evolution and that's it kind of like how the bloodline was running smackdown that's literally what it was evolution and that's it nothing else mattered <laughs> triple h loved rick flair in the 80s so much that he dug up his old belt and even had the man himself in his corner during his infamous reign of terror in the early to mid 2000s that's he also crazy. nicked his idea of a super stable recruiting a young randy orton and batista to form the legendary evolution much like with the horseman evolution's objective was to keep the world heavyweight championship on the game at any cost mm -hmm. but that didn't mean the other members couldn't also have a bit of fun at armageddon 2003 randy orton defeated rob van dam to become intercontinental champion for the first time batista lost his scheduled match to Shawn michaels on the night but perked up when rick flair announced that the two of them would be entering a tag team turmoil match for the world tag team titles and you'll never guess what, they probably yeah. won the thing. Finally, in the night's main events, Triple H defeated Kane and world champion Goldberg in a mm -hmm. triple threat match to win the big gold belt for the third time. The show would end on that iconic image of all four men, belts in hand, standing at the top of the stage. Now that is what I call dominance. And it's crazy, all of them became world champions after that. Obviously, Batista and Randy Orton became world champions just off that stable getting them over obviously triple h has been one and obviously rick flair had been one multiple times but to get the new guys the new blood into the mix and that's really you know especially with new talent that's really what a stable is there for obviously you got the main guy or whatnot but it's it, it's supposed to be able to help other newer talent to get over in a sense with the shield they all got over Roman Reigns, it took a little bit longer, but mo at the end of the day, they all got over. They all became megastars because of that. Same thing with Evolution. You already had Triple H. He was a legend in himself. Ric Flair was a legend in himself. You got the two new, new young bloods and Randy Orton and Batista. And ultimately, once they left, they were over. They were megastars. They became megastars. And now we're seeing it even with the bloodline with more so Jay. It's funny to say that jay is he's he's just he's risen to becoming a very big star in wwe i don't think anyone expect this 10 years ago but main event jay is a real thing it's not just a little funny line no it's a real thing everywhere he goes people are doing the up and down motion they're 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 rocking with his new theme song they they cheer for jay that's they made a new star even though he was already a star with his brother tag team wise but solo wise they've made a new star because of everything they've done with this faction and you know the the history and the story they've built with the bloodline um so it's gonna be very interesting to see if he becomes a solo champion at some point but we'll see how things play out with that so comment down below let me know what's your favorite faction of all time want to know down below but i appreciate all love and support roll 250k and i'm still young to be the youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see you on the next one peace